Hi guys, this is Ray, an educator with the Really Do's Kit Club, and today I'm going to show you how I'm going to alter this idea book. This is just a notebook that I got from Michaels. It was, I think, about last summer. It cost maybe two dollars. And I have just completed my idea book. I usually have one sitting around in the kitchen in case I come up with some ideas during the day because I can't really scrap during the day, but I have time to write down some ideas if I get the chance. And I'm somewhat old-fashioned. I don't put it in my computer yet, so... I like to have stuff written down so I can draw and do sketches or whatever. But I like it to be pretty, so I thought I would alter one this time instead of just getting a notebook and having it sit around. So I'm also going to be using this paper. This is my favorite sheet from the kit this month in the April kit. I like this side too, but I just love this. I love the print, and I like the chicken wire on the background in here. I just, I know that if you've seen some other things that I've been doing with this kit, I've been cutting up this wood and making it look like it's more real life than just being flat, but I just really love it and that's what I want my idea book to look like. So I'm going to start out by cutting these strips and I'm going to ink and distress them. So I've cut up my strips of paper to look like the wood paneling. And what I also did, oops, I missed one right here, is I quickly ran these through the Zutter Distressor because I don't want to sit here and do the whole thing with the Prima. But I haven't inked them yet, and here's why. Because when I put them on my idea book, they're not going to completely match up like this, and then I'm just going to have to re-ink that part anyway at the end. So I've done most of the distressing that I'm going to do. I'm going to ink it as I go along. And just as an aside, I thought I would paint this white before I got started just to give it some little details in the background that you won't really see, but you'll be able to see tiny bits and pieces, and I really didn't want it to be that craft color. So I decided to use white paint, and I am editing this part out because I was turning into the Billy Madison of scrapbooking because I was using my white paint, the Tim Holtz Distress Paint, and every time I use these things, this is what happens the paint comes out from underneath and it makes me very angry and I don't say nice things and I'm sure you don't want to hear it. So you can see it happened to my other one too. I like the paint but I don't like the things that it comes in. You cannot use the dabbers correctly or at least I can't. Maybe it's user error. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to use my Prima Branch Bark and I'm not going to be careful I want that brown on there. I want to see it. I'm just going to quickly do it. Now that I finished putting the wood strips on here, I'm going to do a couple more things to this background before I start piling some other stuff on. And what I want to do is I want to add some stamps. So I'm going to take this stamp that we got in the kit, I think it was the January kit. And I already put it down here, and I'm using peeled paint, Distress Ink, because it's very subtle. I don't want it to be bold, I just kind of want it to blend in. I'm going to add one on the back too. I'm going to add a different stamp. This is the texture stamp. It somewhat looks like fencing. Kind of a cross between fencing and chicken wire. I'm just going to use this end right here. Actually, I think I'm just going to not use a block. And I'm going to use the stays on and timber brown for this. I'm just going to go around the edges. So 
there's a close-up of what it looks like. I just think it adds more interest. It gives it more of a completed look. And so now I am finished with my background and it's time to pile some stuff on. And what I wanted to do was add a tag. So I'm going to use the Ranger tags in size 8. And it's going to fit like that somewhat on here. What I want to do with the tag is I'm going to use some Silks paint. But first I'm going to cover the tag in some Tim Holtz tissue tape. So I'm going to use the Silks Paint Acrylic Glaze. These are both colors that we've had in previous kits. It's the Pink Grapefruit. This is the one that we got in the April kit. And Olive Vine, which we've had a couple of times in a couple of different kits. I think once in the main kit and once in a Technique kit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend these colors together. And even though they don't look like they're two hues, two colors that would have necessarily go together, you can blend these paints so easy on top of this tissue tape. It's exciting. And I've tried a lot of this. I've done about 10 of these tags just trying to see what the different properties were and what you could do. And my best tips for this are to start out with your lighter colors. And you always want to add small amounts first. So I think I'd like to have a pink strip kind of go across from left to right from the top to the bottom of this tag here. So I'm just going to start adding some paint where I think I want it to go, but very minimal. And I think that's good, the pink. I'm just going to take a different finger and put it into the jar of the other color, which is the green. Again, just putting small amounts of this paint on. You definitely don't want to glob it on. So this is dry. It dries fairly quickly. I'm going to go ahead and take a distressor to the edges. And the next thing I'm going to do is I want to have the edges darker. And I could take some ink. I could take chalk ink or distress ink or whatever. And I could fade it in. But I thought just for something different to do, I would use some brown paint and a sea sponge. And you can get these sponges at Michael's. They're right next to the brushes in the art section. So once you get some of this onto your sponge, I like to pounce some of the paint out. And you can keep doing this for a while, putting on as little or as much as you like. I tried it also with black. I love the way that it looks on the black, or with the black paint rather. It shows up a lot better, but black doesn't really fit the scheme that I'm going with for my colors. So I went ahead and did brown. And I have one that I've already made. It's all ready to go. It's all dried. And so... have it open this way because I'm left-handed and it's nice to not have stuff on this side when you're trying to write. You won't have to be doing that. You can just do it like this. Okay, so it's going to go pretty much like that. This is some of the ribbon from the April kit that I cut up to make it look more grungy and I'm going to use it to put, the, to put through the hole in my tag. I wanted to put some lace on the bottom of this tag. This is just from my stash, but I did spritz it with the art anthology that we got in this month's tech kit. If you did not get the tech kit and you've never used these sprays, you have to try them. You have to get them from somewhere and try them out. So I'm going to use this as my guide. I'm going to tilt it to the side. And I think, and I definitely don't want that going off on the bottom. So I think that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and take some glue and commit to my placement of my tag.
And because it has score tape on there, it's really not going anywhere. But this is kind of too small for score tape, so I'm going to go ahead and put some Fabri-Tac on here on the bottom of these little bevels. Alright, and I'm going to add this pink flower. I'm so sad. I've used all of the flowers that look like this in this kit now. I love them. I could have 20 of each of them. I just love them. I thought I would add this little bird cage and one of the buttons from the main kit. I'm going to add this little corner. It's seven gypsies just for my stash. And even though it has this foam adhesive on here, I think it should still have some glue on there. I never trust that kind of adhesive. I think it comes off very easily. So this is looking pretty good, but I was looking really quickly through the rest of my embellishments because I always like to see what else I can pile on. And I thought I would use this. I think it would look nice pulling some different pinks out. And I know this hasn't dried yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this underneath the tag. And this is going to be my idea book for the next couple of months. I'm pretty excited about it because it's so cute. It will look cute sitting out in my kitchen when I don't have time to scrap. I can go ahead and jot down my ideas. I think everyone should have an idea book because if you can't just run to your scrap table and just get started on something right away as soon as you have ideas, I have ideas all day long, and then I forget them. And that's the reason why I have this, obviously. But this is what it looks like. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and thanks for watching.